before jumping into the new version of the table, I thought I'd do a little destructive testing on the prototype here, just to get a ballpark feel for where the strength is at. Here I'm just fixing it in the upper position, and then I've got a 32 kilo or 72 pound kettlebell here, and I'm just loading it right out there at the uh, furthest point, and it holds. I get all of it on there, and a lot of deflection, but uh, it does support the weight. It didn't take a lot of extra force though to help it out enough that it did fail down there at the gusset plate. And a lot of that was due to the my poor gluing technique. I just wanted to get it together. The lower plate seemed like the weakest area though, so I wanted to test the upper part as well in order to see where that would fail. And I used a big piece of granite here as a counterweight and eventually had to use two of them plus the 32 kilo kettlebell down low. I worked my way up the stress levels and ultimately did get it to fail by bouncing up and down. And my estimate here is that I'm exerting about 450 foot-pounds of torque. So that's pretty impressive. And the only the place that it failed was where I had dr drilled the put in screws for the cross piece. So it was weaker there. All in all, I was very pleased with the strength. Pine doesn't get a lot of street cred in the woodworking community, but um, I had to work at it pretty hard to break a piece, and these were not big pieces. After some more thinking time, which mainly consists of standing there and staring at the project with a few notes mixed in, it was time to head down to the lumber yard and pick up some extra material. The best place in our area for this sort of thing is Armstrong Millworks, and today was a great example of why I love this place. They have the racks, and then you look outside, and there's the farm fields, there's the tree with a little shed and a rope swing underneath it. It's just classic. This is in addition, of course, to their lumber, which is also excellent. Now that we're back, it's time to square up the lumber and get it ready. I did build a special extension for the infeed table on this jointer. Uh, this link here will take you to a video about that. We'll cut a few things to length and get the planer warmed up. I planned a lot of the uh, parts of the legs and other things to be two inches, which obviously doesn't work out that well with eight quarter material. So some of these are six quarter and four quarter material, which I'm then gonna glue together. Type Bond 3 is generally my glue of choice and that's what I'm using here. Although you may notice it's a number two container. A few bar clamps to keep it off the floor and get started, and then a handful of C-clamps get everything squared away and ready to dry. My drill press isn't much to brag about, so I check it for square any time that it's important. I need the drill press and the hole saw to make plywood wheels. These are going to replace the bearings that I used on the prototype, because the bearings are really just unnecessary. It doesn't need to be that strong. I wandered all around McMaster Car and admired a lot of their uh, cam followers and things like that, but those are going to be harder to source for people, and plywood wheels are strong enough. It really doesn't need anything else. So I'm going to glue them together and, uh, to make wide ones for inch and a half for the rear, and otherwise they're going to be half inch. The counterweight arms are going to pivot on this bolt here. The cross member that goes between the legs is going to sit here and be held in place by this nut. And then the two counterweight arms are going to pivot in these spaces with a jam nut at the end to keep to keep out the play but without actually compressing them. And then in these areas we're going to need a bushing for that to rotate freely. And the material that seems best is just a piece of half inch copper pipe. It's got a little bit extra room but we'll cut it here, put a slot to let it squeeze a little bit and hopefully that should be about just right. All right, we're going to cut this bushing to length here, and it's 7 eighths is our thickness. So 
So we have a little bit of room to spare here. And if I squeeze it almost all the way, it's too tight. So the properly sized wooden hole will hold it and give it just a little bit of play. It's the next day, so we'll clean up the glue edge on these boards here and get them ripped down to size. A quick layout on the legs here, and when I do the vertical portions, I'm using my favorite measuring technique, which is to use the actual piece. We need to create a mortise on the end of this piece so it can slide down vertically into the bottom piece of the leg. And I don't really want to use the table saw because it's such a long piece and I don't have a jig for that right now. So I'm going to use a router and I'm going to just take a bit here and route this way. They're a little high for your average person, but I've never tripped over a cord plugged into the ceiling. We finished up our tenon cut here on the leg piece, and we need to create a mortise for it. So we made a negative of it, and I'm going to use a... Uh, sort of top bearing flush trim mortise bit, whatever you call it, to go through here and uh, create that mortise. Now this nice neat hole can serve as the template to make it deeper. It's our inaugural fit. Cut a little chamfer on the edges here. All right, we've got the first leg together here. Not glue, just dry fit. And what I want to do here at the bottom to reinforce this joint is that we're going to take this and cut a taper off of it and then flip that taper around to reinforce here. So we're setting up our track saw to make that cut. I could have gotten away without the nail guns, but it was the end of the day and they work so well for positioning things. Here we're cutting the taper for the upper arms, and you can see that the maximum depth of the saw was just a hundredth or so short of the thickness of the board, and we had that perfect little scrap left over. I didn't feel like breaking out the track saw to cut a 70 degree angle on these pieces up there. So we just went ahead and made a 25 degree booster piece. Here we've got the upper arm and we're gluing the taper uh, balance back onto it on the right side to give it extra strength in the joint. Here's our mock-up of the upper arms. The piece on the top is going to serve as a gusset plate and that's what we were mitering with that 70 degrees. We're going to drill a few holes to help these screws go into place and hold this. We can't run a mortise and tenon, at least I don't think we can, because I need to have a piece which slides this way in the top to lock the whole table up and down. A quick squareness check before we commit to securing everything with glue.
We just finished up routing the mortises and the legs for the cross piece. And as usual, there are chips and things absolutely everywhere. These pieces were a bit easier than some of the other ones we routed, but a slot mortiser would definitely be beneficial and I'll probably build one in the future. We're going to drill our center hole here for the counterweight arms to pivot on. The pivot point is installed and just needs some arms. I wanted to test this bushing strategy so I drilled a 9 16 hole through a piece of scrap wood and we've got our copper here. We'll just get it started. That copper is conveniently chamfered on the end from the cutter tool. Of course that chamfer extends to the inside as well, so I cleared it out with a half inch bit. It still has a small amount of play, but it spins freely, so we're pleased. It's the end of the week and we have a whole new desk. It may not look a lot different, but it's been completely rebuilt and much improved. So let's take a tour of those features. I'll first note that while the major pieces are built and assembled, they're not actually uh, attached with fasteners, so we've got clamps holding everything together. First up, all the material here is hickory. And while hickory may not be all that necessary, I know that it's a very resilient and tough wood, and I haven't worked with it before, so I wanted to give it a try. We can see here that both of these pieces are two inches. Two inches is kind of the number that I went for so far, and that's what a lot of these uh, pieces are, two inches square. And we have some sort of gusset plates that come back off the top part there. We're going to have our rear wheel that sits here. And the other one down in the front for our legs down here. We have those tapers that we talked about and our mortise and tenon joint at the bottom. I've actually made that so that it can be taken apart because I don't want this to be a giant fixed piece. So we have a, it's not a mortise and tenon, but it's a slot that'll come apart. There'll be a pin that goes through here and here. Here's the bolt system with the side that faces the user. That could be countersunk later. It comes over the top. We have our bushings and the pieces of wood and then the jam nut on the outside. Seems pretty, uh, pretty smooth. No counterweights yet, but a good start. I added these tails to the legs because I realized that there's quite a lot of weight with the counterweights in the back and I just wanted to have zero risk that it could tip over backwards. I also realized that my original plan for a locking system that would slide in and lock into notches in the legs isn't going to work because it would be trying to resist pulling up. Even if I put a plate it would be pulling here. It's just not going to be strong enough. So I need to come up with other solutions and I'm considering them right now. Not to worry, something good will certainly come up. This next week will be dedicated to getting the table operational, getting the fasteners in place, things fine-tuned, and hopefully sanding off some of the sharp edges from the joiner that we've been bumping into. So we'll be back then, and thanks for watching. Sometimes you get cool pieces of scrap. We wanted to make quarter-inch pieces out of a board and did it from each side and ended up with a nice block number two.